Welcome back. Moving forward, I'm going to demonstrate how to configure your actual MySQL server so that we can start working into the Hibernate environment. So in the previous couple of lessons, we installed the SQL tools and of course the Hibernate installation was also shown. But here, I'm going to go ahead and actually show you how to connect your MySQL database within the Eclipse editor with Hibernate, okay? So let's go ahead and first navigate to our perspective, which is database development, and take a look at existing DBs. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. And from the left side, the data source explorer, notice there's an option called database connections. So let me expand this. And by default, there is a JBoss DS database, right? And this is installed as soon as you install the JBoss tools for Hibernate. So this is the default DB. But we're not going to use it. We're going to use our own SQL MyPHP admin or SQL database. So in order to do this, let's go ahead and create a new connection. But before I, in fact, start creating the connection and uh, start demonstrating how it's done. Let me go ahead to my web browser and here it is. And notice I'm in my local host, right? So I need a local host setup. So this is my personal web server using the XAMPP server. And of course, you've seen how to install XAMPP, how to download XAMPP, and how to configure the Apache server. Here is the XAMPP control panel and notice my Apache is running, my SQL is running also and here's the port 3306 which is the default MySQL port. And the reason why we need to know this is because once we configure the actual connection you need to be aware of the actual port as well. So once your XAMPP is up and running and you have the URL and your site is loading or your page is loading Next, we can now go ahead and take a look at the SQL as well. So if I just highlight the SI578, get rid of this, and type my PHP admin, or in fact, it's PHP my admin, this will connect me to my localhost or PHP my admin SQL database. Now I already have bunch of these databases created right so I'm going to show you from scratch so first I'm going to go ahead and create a new database and then we are going to get back to our Eclipse environment and make the connection perfect so once I'm in the PHP my admin I'm simply going to go ahead and click on new and give it a database name I'm going to call it hibernate DB I can select the collation so typically it's UTF-8 and CI general. You can pick any one that you like. So let's scroll down. And where is it? All right. If I can only find it somewhere here. Okay, here it is. So it's UTF-8 general CI, which is simply multilingual case insensitive collation. So just give it a name, Hibernate DB, and click Create. So what this is going to do is create a blank database called Hibernate DB. If I click on it, notice there are no tables at this point in time. But I'm not going to create a table yet. I'm simply going to show you how to connect. So all we did was create a database. Next, let's go back to our Eclipse and try to connect because now we have tested that our MyPHP admin works and we can successfully create a sample database, although there are no tables. So let's navigate back to our Eclipse IDE. And from the Data Source Explorer, make sure you're within the database development perspective. I'm going to go ahead and right click the DB connections. Click New, brings up the Connection Profile dialog box. Notice you can 
have any kind of backend database, right? So you can have DB2, Derby, Informix, Oracle, Postgres, and so on, right? So I'm going to choose MySQL. Click Next. And this is an important area. So you ought to know the name of your database, right? So we just created one. We called it Hibernate DB. That's the name of the database. And here's the URL. So this is the actual JDBC connector, right? You need to specify the URL of your local host. So let's go ahead and do JDBC colon. And then I'm going to say MySQL oh, let me get the spelling right here so it'll be MySQL colon forward slashes and localhost because that's where I'm running the local exam server right and then of course colon with a port number so remember default port for SQL is 3306 forward slash and then of course the name of the db once again hibernate db perfect the username by default is root and password is blank i didn't specify any password but if you would like to create your own username and password you could do so within the my php admin and then specify it here so before i click next it's a good idea to test the connection right so make sure you're syntax or the URL or the username passwords are correct. So I'm going to go ahead and click test connection and ping is succeeded. Click OK. Let's go ahead and click next. Just verify the summary here and then click finish. And perfect. We have our MySQL connection and notice automatically it displays the DB here. So if I expand this it gives me the authorization IDs, which is localhost, claydesk, PMA root, localhost, and the localhost 127.0.0.1. And of course, my schemas would contain any tables within the DB. So at this point, within the Hibernate DB, if I expand tables, notice there's nothing, right? So there's no table. So let's go ahead and, in fact, create a table. And then Take a look at whether the table is going to show up here or not. So let's do this quickly. Navigate back to my browser. So make sure I've selected the Hibernate DB here. I'm going to go ahead and create a table called Students. And then number of columns. I'm just going to have two here, just the first name and last name, just so that I can demonstrate, right? So click Go. And this is going to create a table. The first field name is the first name. And this is the text type. The length is going to be 25. And next is the last name. Similarly, the type is text with 25. Of course, I can specify the collation attributes and set this as a primary key as well. So if I need another column with a primary key index, I could do so. But at this point, just quickly I want to demonstrate, once we actually get to the Hibernate developer environment, then we will work with the primary keys. And I'm going to demonstrate and explain everything about Hibernate. All right. So once we have the two fields created, I'm going to go ahead and click on Save. And this is going to create the table for us. Notice right under the Hibernate DB, we have a student's table. Of course, no data yet, just the table created. And here's the SQL query, select from students if I need to. All right, so once our table is created called students, let's navigate back to our Eclipse IDE and verify whether it exists or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and simply right click on the Hibernate DB and refresh, right? And also refresh the connection because sometimes it doesn't get refresh. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh the actual connection, expand my Hibernate DB. Let's go to schemas, expand the database. And if I expand tables, 
Okay, nothing yet. Let's go ahead and try again. And let's go ahead and do refresh. See if we can find it. All right, not yet. Let's go back to our browser here. Make sure I refresh here or reload because if you don't reload here, it's not going to, you know, the change is not going to take effect. So I want to make sure that I reload my PHP admin, my local host, and then I'm going to navigate back to my clips and try again. So right click, simply refresh and refresh my DB as well. Let's go ahead and expand to our table section and it's not showing up. So next step is to actually disconnect and then connect again. See if this time it would actually do the trick. There we go. Perfect. So if it does not refresh automatically or a couple of times, just disconnect and connect. Okay, although it should, by the way, just so you know, it should refresh. So here's my table that I created. And of course, it has the details with dependencies and columns and constraints as well. So here are the two fields that I created the last name and the first name. Perfect. So we have successfully tested the connectivity from your my P HP admin SQL database, the back end, right, with your Hibernate uh, environment. Well, not really Hibernate at this point, just the DB connection. Because once we get into the actual Hibernate perspective, we can start working with or creating the apps as well. So this is where you would need to see when we create the Java app how the objects are actually stored into the MySQL database. So I hope this helps practice and as a homework task and practice task, uninstall the DB connections and create them again a couple of times and use various databases. So you may want to use MySQL or use PostgreSQL just so that you get good at practicing. So with this, let's move to the next lesson.